In this video, we're going to be talking about data types in your DocuSimil interview, what they are, how to use them, and why you would want to use them. And let's start out with the why first. Data types are constraints that you can put on your DocuSimil questions so that they guarantee a similar sort of answer when the user is inputting information. Basically, they have three reasons that you would want to use data types on your questions. Uh, the first reason is you don't want inconsistent types of answers to certain questions. Let's say you want the user to put in the amount of money that they have in their pockets or how many brothers and sisters that they have as a number. So you wouldn't want them writing out one or 1,000 as words. You want them putting in numbers so that when you format your document, it looks the same document to document, however you're formatting it. Data types guarantee the variables are the same type. Let's say you want to add up the numbers of brothers and sisters that someone has. You don't want to be adding, you know, numbers one, you know, number two, and then, you know, 1,000 or whatever the user put in in words because that's not something you can do programmatically um, without some severe wrangling. So it guarantees that you're going to get just integers or you know whole numbers instead of words. And the third reason is data types make your interviews easier for the users. You kind of put them on rails so that they know what's expected of them when answering the question. Uh, for example, you can give them a list of choices. Uh, you can limit them to uh, a number. You can limit them to, you know, basically anything that you want so that it makes the interview easier for them so they're not having to guess at what the format of the answer should be. Um, so with that, we're going to get started. I've gone ahead and created the bare bones of an interview. And in this interview, we're asking the user to put in what is their first and last name, where, uh, sorry, when were they born, how many siblings do they have, how much money do they have in their pockets, what's their email address, what's their favorite state, and what kind of nuts do they like more, peanuts or pecans. So they're supposed to choose between those two options. And then at the end, we're going to just return everything back to the user so they can see all of their answers. So let's go ahead and run our interview and see what happens if we pretend that we are just a user who doesn't really know what the person who wrote the interview is looking for. So what is your name? That's pretty straightforward. First name Bob, last name Smith. When were you born? Uh, on a Tuesday, right? How many siblings do you have? Five. What is your favorite state? Uh, let's say denial, because why not? What nuts do you like more, peanuts or pecans? Uh, you know, honestly, I like walnuts better. What is your email address? Uh, you know, I don't want them sending emails to me, so no. Uh, how much money do you have in your pockets? Uh, five Bitcoin, because that's none of their business, honestly. Okay, so here are my responses. Hello, Bob Smith, you were born on, on a Tuesday. You have five siblings, so that kind of worked. Your favorite state is denial. Your favorite nuts are walnuts, and your email address is no. You have dollar sign five Bitcoin in your pockets. So you can see that uh, there's a conflict between what the interview writer wanted the user to put in and what the user actually wanted to put in because the user was allowed to put in basically anything they wanted. And the reason that the user was allowed to put in any, anything that they wanted is that we didn't use any data types when we were writing this interview. When you just have uh, the label and the name of the variable in your interview, that just lets the user put in what is in programming speak a string. When the user is presented with just this blank box, they can put in whatever they want. 
They can put in symbols, they can put in numbers, they can put in letters. That's useful for things like names, for things like um, you know long answers, things like that, or things where it's obvious that the user is supposed to put in words. But for things like where you want the user to put in a number, like two, uh, you don't want them to have the ability to really put in whatever in the world they want. So now let's talk about how to actually use data types in your interview so that the user is guided into putting what you want and what the correct format of the answer is so that it's easier to work with so that everybody's happier at the end of the interview. So for name, uh, we don't really need to change anything. We don't want to limit the user to, you know, like a number for their name or something like that. So we'll leave those as just strings. But for birth date, we don't want them putting in, um, you know, whatever in the world they want. So the way that you use data types is right under our label, we put in data type and then a colon. And for data type, for birth date, we're just going to put in date. Now you can put in date time, but that requires the user to put in both a date and a time, and usually people don't know the time that they were born. So for most things you can just use data type date. Now for siblings, you know what we talked about is wanting the number as a number, not as words, and in programming speak those are called integers. Um, whole numbers, not fractions, you don't have 1.75 siblings, uh, you just have one or you have two or you have zero. So for data type on number, and I misspelled data type, we're going to put integer. How much money do you have in your pockets? For this, we also want a number, right? But Doc and Symbol has a nifty little feature that lets you put in uh, not just a number, but currency. So we're going to put currency there. Now for email address, we want to make sure the email address has um, an at sign and then some sort of address like a .com or .org or .io, whatever it may be. And Doc Symbol has a way of handling that as well with data type email. And basically this runs a validation check on the variable to make sure that it has an at sign and has something at .com or .whatever. Um, so that it looks like a valid email address. Now there's a caveat here because DocuSymbol isn't actually testing the email address to make sure, hey, does this email address actually exist? You know, if somebody puts in none of your business at noneofyourbusiness.com without spaces, that would probably validate as an email address. But it's still useful to see whether or not the email address is valid. So now we come down to what is your favorite state? And for this, we're not actually going to use a data type. I'm actually going to do something a little bit more in depth here because we want people choosing a state from you know, one of the states in the United States. You know, or is their favorite state Louisiana? Is it Illinois? Is it Hawaii? We don't want them put in, my favorite state is denial, like we did when we were running through the interview. We want them choosing a physical state. So instead of data types, we're going to put in just some something very simple here. And this is a great feature that DocuSymbol has. Code instead of data type and states list. And what this does, and we'll run through the interview one more time, so that you can see it, is that this gives the user an option list of all of the states that are in the United States to choose from. They can't choose anything that's outside of it. Um, they're limited to that set of states. And this is a built-in feature of DACA symbol. You can use this in whatever DACA symbol you're running. Um, it's already in there. You don't have to code it in or anything like that. One of the features that you can put in DACA symbol 
is your own list. So you can create a list of counties, you can create a list of states of being if you wanted that and have it come up with this kind of code block here. We're not going to get into that now, but it's just useful information to have for the future. So now let's go down to what nuts do you like more, peanuts or pecans? And you know, with users using our interview, we really want to limit them to, you know, either peanuts or pecans for this answer. We want, don't want them putting in something snarky. So let's set our choices as peanuts or pecans. And so let's save it and make sure we didn't do anything weird. Okay, and now let's save and run it. So now we're back at what is your name. So we're still Bob Smith. Oh. When were you born? So now I can't put in a string of text. I have to put in an actual date. And the handy thing about this birth date field is you can put in dates by hand, uh, 1983, or if you click the down arrow, you get this nice little calendar feature where they can choose what date. So it's really a handy feature for your users. It makes life a lot easier when they're putting in the date. How many siblings do you have? Okay, let's try and put in one. Uh, uh, I can't put in a words, so let's put in a number. And you see I'm clicking on these little up and down arrows here. That's another handy feature of the number field or the integer field. It lets you increase or decrease the number in there. So let's say I have two siblings. What is your favorite state? Okay, well I can't type in there, but uh, let's, oh look, we have a list of states. And let's say my favorite state is New Mexico. What nuts do you like more, peanuts or pecans? Answer here, peanuts or pecan, well, uh, I'm gonna go with pecans. And what is your email address? No. Let's see what happens. Oh. Well, I need to enter a complete email address. So let's say uh, Sam, or let's say Bob. Bob at bobsmith.org. Oh, okay. So continue. How much money do you have in your pockets? Uh, I have $10 in my pockets. And you'll see that this looks a lot like the integer field. Um, but it has a dollar sign right there. And I can increment by pennies using the arrows if I want to. But let's just put in $10. Okay, here are my responses. Hello, Bob Smith. You were born on November 11th, 1983. You'll remember that we put in the date as a number, but when it's a date, it can convert it to uh, month, day, comma, and then year which is also very handy. You have two siblings. Your favorite state is New Mexico, so it uses the abbreviation there. Your favorite nuts are pecans. Your email address is bob at bobsmith.org, and you have $10 in your pockets. By using data types to put our user on rails, we've kind of guaranteed that no matter who answers this interview. They're putting in a date for when they were born, a number or an integer for how many siblings that they have. They're putting in an amount of currency for how much money they have in their pockets. They're putting an email address that looks valid for their email address. They're putting in one of the states in the United States for their favorite state and they're choosing between peanuts or pecans and not putting in some random kind of nut like walnuts or Brazil nuts or whatever other kind of nuts there are, I'm not really sure. By using data types in our interview, we've guaranteed really consistent answers and we've made life easier for our users. So let's say we wanted to send an email to all of the users who completed this interview and say just say thank you for completing the interview. 
So now we have some sort of guarantee that we have a list of valid email addresses. Or if we wanted to add up how much money our users had in their pockets, we have some sort of guarantee that we can add the inputs that they put in for a money amount. So that's why we use data types. Um, I would highly encourage you to mess around with them when you're creating interviews to think about how to use them smartly, when it's best to use them, how to use them well, and always use them when you're going to be doing further operations with the answers that you get, like sending emails or adding things up or using variables in different parts of your interview. Um, especially if you're running them through some sort of code or anything like that. So these are the basic data types. There are other data types that you can use. I would encourage you to explore those as well. And thanks for watching.